All right, I'm going to quickly show you how to find minimums and maximums uh, given a table. We had a hard time with this uh, on the quiz. To uh, do this, I think I'll show you the easiest way. I'm going to make a graph here. And when I make my graph, I'm just going to plot the points I'm given. Negative 2 to 5, 3, 4, 5. So there's a point on my graph, and negative 1, 1's a point on my graph, and 0, negative 1 is on the graph. Uh, one zeros on the graph. Um, two twos on the graph. Three ones on the graph. And finally, four negative one. So once you have that, kind of sketch out what your graph would look like. Um, and let's go about finding zeros. To find zeros, all we have to do is pin down where we've crossed the x-axis. So I'm going to draw an arrow there and an arrow there. And the reason I'm drawing them right there is because if you notice right there I've crossed the x-axis. That means there's a zero there. What x values did it occur between? It occurred between negative one and zero. Okay. I'm looking at the x values here. This is where x is zero at the origin. This is where x is negative one and the zero, that dot, that point right there, happens in between those. So when I'm listing my zeros, I would say, hey, there's a zero somewhere between x is negative one and x is zero. A quick note about the notation I've used here. Your variable goes in the middle, small number on the left, bigger number on the right, and just point them left. And you're guaranteed to have it that correct all the time. Uh, this should make sense to us because just like a number line, it goes negative 1, then our x value, then 0. Look at the graph. Negative 1, the x value that we're looking for, and then the x value is 0. Okay, so it's very, very similar to just writing down where x is on a number line. Let's find another 0 here. Okay, as I look at the graph, I can see right there I've crossed the x-axis. And in fact, if I look at the table, I can see there is a zero there. What's the x value when I'm at zero? One. That is another solution or another zero. x equals one gives me a zero. And then my last zero is right there. What does it occur between? It occurs between positive three and positive four. So I say that x is somewhere between positive 3 and positive 4. Again, notice smaller number on the left, bigger number on the right, and both the inequalities point left. And we just found the 0. Let's talk about mins and maxes now. Okay, uh, Basically, when you're looking for mins and maxes, you are looking for your function to go from decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing. Let's explain what that means. Let's start on our graph. Let's go, let's see if we can pull up some sort of light color here for us. Mm -hmm. That's good. We just got to somehow make it a bigger. We're not sure how to do that. We'll make do here. Look at which way this graph is going. This graph, at the very beginning, it heads down, 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 down. It hits this point, and then it heads up. This over here on the left-hand side, the graph as x's move along to the right, the graph is going downward, downward, and then turns around and goes up. That means you had to have a minimum. You had to go from somewhere to a low, from a lowest point, or a low point to a higher point. You had to turn around. And so when we describe that minimum, we just say, well, that minimum happened somewhere between those two points, where I was decreasing to where I was increasing. And so we're going to say that we've got a minimum where x was greater than or equal to 0, uh, less than 1. Now the minimum could have occurred right here where x was 0, so we should probably include that. In fact, we should include that to be technically correct. Okay. Next, let's do a mat maximum. To do a maximum, let's look at our function now. We were at increasing, 
increasing, all of a sudden our function turned around. That means we had to have a maximum somewhere. So as it went from increasing to decreasing, there was a maximum. It could have occurred right at 2. It could have gone a little bit higher and then turned around. Um, but somehow, it had to have a highest point uh, somewhere in that region. Otherwise, if it didn't, it could have kept... It couldn't have gone... If it turned around and went lower, it had to be a maximum by definition. Okay, So our maximum, where did that occur at? And in this case, it looks like it occurred between 2 and 3. And so we say that x is between 2, smaller number on the left, and 3. And we'll include that 2 just in case that is the maximum. We know 3 isn't the maximum because 3 was lower than where the function was when x was 2. Okay, so that's how we do it uh, by looking at the graph. I think that works pretty effectively. Quickly, though, I will show you how to do this just from the table which I think the table in some cases is even easier. So I'm going to get rid of these notes that I have. Now I'm going to do it just by looking at the table. For the table, when I'm finding zeros, I look for a change in sign. Here I went from 5, which is positive, to 1, which is positive, to negative 1, which is 0. Right there, I went from a positive y value so think about the graph. I'm up here. I'm on a positive y value, and I went to a negative y value. That means my graph had to cross 0, or the x-axis. So right, and there's a 0. Where did that 0 occur? Between x is negative 1 and 0. So I go x, small number on the left, bigger number on the right. There's one of my zeros. Um, right here, I kind of have a sign change. I went from negative 1 to 0, which is neutral. But that's exactly the point I'm looking for. That's a solution. That's exactly where the function equals 0. Again, I'm looking for a sign change as I continue on. 0 to 2, that's neutral to positive. 2 to 1 is positive to positive. 1 to negative 1. Sign change. That means there's a 0 in there. What are the x values? 3 on the left and 4 on the right. So I just grab those two x values and there's a 0 in there. So that's finding zeros uh, from your graph, or from your table. Pretty simple. Let's find mins and maxes. For mins and maxes, what you're looking for is a change from decrease to increase or increase to decrease. So to determine that, we look at the numbers. There's 5. I went down to 1. I went down further to negative 1. I went up to positive 1. Right there, I changed. I was decreasing down to negative 1, and all of a sudden I increased to a positive 0. So between 0 and 1, I had myself a, a minimum. Again, the function was going down to negative 1, and then it went up. It means I had to have a lowest point. So a minimum occurred where x was 0 on the left, one on the right, it could have happened right at zero. Okay, uh, now we continue on. Now remember, our last thing was the function had started to increase. So it went from zero to two, that's another increase. It went from two to one, two to one's a decrease. It just turned around again. The function was increasing. It went from negative one to zero to two, and then it went back down to one. So there had to be a maximum right in that region. So I say, hey, what's the low point of that maximum? The lowest x value, 2. The highest, 3. And I slap in. Could be 2. Right there could have been the maximum. And you can kind of see that 2 could possibly be the maximum if you look at the uh, table. Uh, here I'm at 0. Here I'm at 2. Here I'm at 1. So there's a hump. It went all the way up to 2. Could have gone a little bit higher than 2. I don't know. I don't know what happened between 2 and 3. But based on the information I have, I'm guaranteed I hit a maximum either at 2 or uh, before 1 in order to turn around. And that's how you find minimums. Hope that helps you with analyzing tables uh, to find zeros, maxes, and mins.